It's another sunny, beautiful day in ancient Egypt during the illustrious reign of Pharaoh Ramses II. At the bustling dock in Thebes, a boy named Atet is preparing for a great adventure. Wow, I thought today would never come. My brothers and I are heading down the Nile with our dad. My very first trip. Since I'm missing scribe school, teacher says I need to write everything down and give a report when I get back. So mom and dad gave me my very own med head, a set of writing tools for the trip. It's got reed brushes, a palette, and ink. We always use red and black ink in Egypt. I'm not sure why, but it reminds me of our red and black lands. Most of Egypt is like this, hot and dry. It's pretty easy to see why we call it Deshra, the red land. But some of Egypt is like this. It looks green on the top, but underneath is very rich black dirt. We call this land Kemet, the black land. It's where we grow all of our crops. If you flew like a bird, you'd see that the Kemet is all along the banks of the Nile River. Dad says that's why Egypt is called the gift of the Nile. <laughs> Sounds strange, I know, but let me explain. Egypt is mostly desert, right? But look, here, flowing through the whole length of the country, is the Nile River. It starts in the lands far to the south and travels nearly 4,000 miles to the sea up north. Everything in Egypt happens along the Nile. For one thing, it's like our main road, the very best way for anyone to travel around the country. But even more important than how the Nile carries us is what it brings us. Every year, heavy rains far to the south wash a lot of silt, or weathered rock particles, into the river. Dad says the silt combines with leaves and branches to form a rich mix full of iron, zinc, and other things, kind of like vitamins for the soil. We call this good stuff hoppy. So, every summer, all this water and hoppy flow down the Nile into Egypt, flooding the land for four months. When the floodwaters recede, they leave the hoppy behind. It makes the dirt really good for planting. A very long time ago, my ancestors started living along the Nile and planting crops. Then, they had some very smart ideas. First, they dug ditches and canals to trap in the flood water. Then, during the dry season, they would open the canals and let water flow into the fields. Sometimes the fields were higher than the canals, and it was really hard to carry enough water by hand. So, they invented the shadoof, a long pole with a bucket at one end and a weight at the other. It makes lifting heavy water a lot easier. Delivering water to crops is called irrigation. We are some of the first people to figure out how to do that. Pretty clever, huh? We Egyptians are always coming up with solutions to complicated problems. For instance, the Nile's floodwaters are so important that we developed a way to predict when they would arrive. We watch the moon and stars very carefully in order to keep track of the river's rise and fall. Out of that, we created a really accurate calendar with 365 days. The Sumerians only have 360 days in their calendar. Our New Year starts with the first day of the flood when the star Sirius rises directly with the sun. Then we have four months of Akhet, the time of flooding, four months of Puret, the time of sowing, when the river recedes. 
and four months of Shimu, the time of harvest and heat. Everything in Egypt revolves around the seasons of the Nile. But not only did we figure out when the Nile was going to flood, we also figured out how well it would flood. We built a Nileometer to keep track. It measures the water level at all times, letting us know the best height for the incoming floods. If the flood is too low, we don't have enough water for our crops. If the flood is too high, everything washes away. Lucky for us, most years the Nile floods are just right. We can grow all kinds of crops, like barley, wheat, flax, vegetables, and fruits. Dad says we have been farming like this for thousands of years. That makes us very experienced and well-organized farmers. If the floods are good, it's easy to grow enough food for everyone. And that frees up time for us to work on other projects, like building cities and temples. We couldn't do any of that if it was hard to grow food and we were hungry. So thanks to the Nile, we have a land of abundance. That's what Dad means when he calls Egypt the gift of the Nile. 